I hate my life. I've been told that I am contractually obligated to read this to you folks. <clears throat> Due to the more aggressive liberal tactics of YouTube as of late with the censorship of all firearms, airsoft, nerf, and other channels related to anything that even resembles what they fear as a scary gun, Many channels of smaller of smaller subscribers are being forced to be censored and or adopt a new ideology in the way of their content. As such, it is up to us, the you, you, the subscribers, to please subscribe and hit the bell for notifications, even though YouTube has been known to hide subscriber feeds from the subscribers themselves. <clears throat> As such, it is up to you, the viewers, <clears throat> to fight back the censorship by sharing the video on any and all social media with your friends, family, bar mitzvah buddies, drinking buddies, and or also fellow three percenters and or Americans. <clears throat> Also, would you kindly help support the channel by please donating to the PayPal link down below. Thank you all so much for your time. On with the video. Merry Christmas, ladies and gentlemen. It's December. I know I'm a little late on this, but by God and baby Jesus, it's Christmas time. And yes, that means the war on Christmas is in full swing. But you know what? That's another video for another day. But today, ladies and gentlemen, I bring you the first of many Christmas-themed reviews to Christmas 2018. And thank God we're not reviewing any crap guns. No more crap guns. Not for the whole month of December, I'm not reviewing any horrible guns, I'm not reviewing any bad guns. We're just going to review good, wholesome, Christmas gift idea guns. So, sit back ladies and gentlemen as we take a look under my Christmas tree to see what gun we're going to be reviewing today. <laughs> Ooh, what to review first? The Luger? The Steyr? Broomhandle? Deagle? 1911? Good with the sci-fi gun! Oh, so many to choose from, what's that? Nothing. Maybe it's Dick. Give it there. What are you back there? <gasps> you say I get twelve. Thank you, Putin. Thank you. Folks, I've never seen AK-12 like this. That wasn't made by LCT or Nuco. Oh, this is such... Oh, my goodness. I wonder who makes this. Apparently, the price tag on here says $60, so that's interesting. Who makes it? Who makes this gun? I wonder. Who who, who makes it? Who makes it? Who who makes it? I am, I am very curious now. Oh, you know what? The instruction manual will say also. Let me, let me actually open up the instruction manual. Let's see who actually makes this. I'm curious here.
Fool me once. I'm mad. Fool me twice. How could you? Fool me three times. You're officially that guy. Okay, you know, you know the one. You go to the bar, he's like, this suit is uh, officially is a Giorgio Armani. Ask my dad knows and fuck you. I ain't having that shit. Of course you had to get one more in on me, you son of a bitch. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the well. AK-12. Excuse me while I go do some research. 24 hours later. Hmm. Hmm. Um, folks, you might want to sit down for this one. Grab a, gla grab a glass of eggnog. This one's a doozy. So, um... Well, it may say well on it. It's not well. Um, it's actually JG. Excuse me, why? Okay, like I said, sit back for this one. The first thing I should have noticed when in, when doing, when, well, first red flag I should have seen is JG or even an identification is JG is the instruction manual. Let me just grab the instruction manual. So... Does this look familiar, anyone? Yeah, anyone who's ever had a JG will know this is the exact same style, even font, down to the funny Chinglish of the JG instruction manual you would see. Uh, it's a JG AK-12. I don't know the full extent of it, but apparently it is. And instead of an AK-12, they're using an AK-74M. In fact, there's more of these under $60 AKs, and they're all JG. Bad touch! Bad touch! Stranger danger! Uh, we have the 74, uh, a 47, which in reality has, uh, a 74M style body almost. And even in reality, that's, it's insane, more or less. So, yeah. The fact this is a JG is beyond me. But we're gonna get into that in more detail here in a second. But the biggest thing is the box itself, which, once again, another red flag. I should have seen JG, I think. I'm not sure. Again, this is just... I'm conflicted, folks. Especially the story I got, which, again, I hope you're sitting down, because this is a doozy. So, where to begin? Okay. Thankfully, this one does not come with a pink slip, so it's not a bad gun, by any stretch of the word. It does come with... 0.12 BBs, which we will not be using, but look at the box. It's actually not bad cover art. That's actually pretty decent art. It showcases that, yeah, it's going to have a big yellow ring right there, but not too ungodly big that you don't have to worry about it. And even the gun itself, I mean, again, I hope you're sitting down. I really do. So, yeah. This is the AK-12. The story that I told you guys to sit down for. <clears throat> so, Jade, when the AK-12 was announced, many companies wanted to replicate it and make it, but apparently due to legal reasons, they couldn't do it. JG, being JG, apparently, decided to make one under $60 so as not to pop up on the radar of many companies, of the company itself. However, fearing they might get legal reprobate, uh, reprobate, basically fearing they'll get sued either way, they went through well to sell it. Well, fearing that they get sued, went through UK Arms for distribution. Uh, is that going to be on the test? Ow. Ow. I'm going. I'm going. So in a sense, what we're seeing here is one big legal hoopla. It's, it's insane to think about that a company like JG would go through a subsidiary company like, well, I might be using that word wrong, but you follow me, follow my, follow this, because I've been trying to ponder this for a while now, went through a subsidiary like Well, who also went through a subsidiary like UK Arms. I wouldn't be surprised if Double Eagle was in here somehow, but good God, this is a three-way airsoft conspiracy that, if true, 
which so far I'm taking as gospel because I couldn't find any other information to dispute the story that I have found out about. So we're looking at one big airsoft conspiracy that is beyond insane. And let's face it, is insane to think about and try and dig into because how a company like this has been doing this for a long while. Because here's the thing, folks. These under $60 AK-12s have been on the market for well before, for a long time. And there's some features about this gun that I've actually been surprised about. And to be fair, yeah, we need to talk about in depth and whether or not you should grab this over the ridiculously priced one. Yes, I know it's made in a rail steel company. Get off my back. So yeah, um, talk about it. So the AK-12 here by JG, I know a lot of you are going to be raging in the comments section saying, no, it's my bow well, it's my bow well, it's crap, it's crap, it's my bow, you can't it's crap, crap, crap. Again, if we're to believe the story, this is actually a JG produced gun that is sold through well that is distributed through UK Arms. Again, try and follow that. So, what does it feature? Well, it features an actual functioning charging handle, a standard AK hop up, and not a proprietary, but a standard AK magazine. And it is compatible with other AK mags. And if you put a 47 style magazine in this, let me go grab it. If you put an AK-47 style magazine, i.e. this type, then you effectively turn the gun into an AK-15. Little fun fact. While the AK-12 will fire, from what I've heard and from what I've read, a standard 5.56 NATO round, or in this case we'll just say NATO round, there is an AK-15 that is chambered in 7.62 x 39 i.e. the standard one. So the AK, so if you put a standard AK round, or AK mag into this thing, you could basically say, oh, I have an AK-15. But for the test and everything we're going to be doing today, we're going to effectively use the standard NATO style magazine uh, to turn it into an AK-12. Now, aside from the charging handle and all, it does have a metal outer barrel. Uh, it has a plastic flash hider, which cannot be removed. And a butt and the battery goes into the buttstock here, which uses standard Tamiya, well, small Tamiya, more or less, this right here. Don't worry, it's not burnt, it's just painted on, apparently. I, I don't know why. I don't know why the company painted on there. I don't claim to know a lot about it. It's, it's again, the, the freaking asinine story I told you guys is still jumbling around in my brain. Now, the fire selector is where things get interesting, because the fire selector works just like a standard AR. Your first is semi-automatic, which by the way, the trigger is metal. Second click is full auto. This trigger is a little bit stiff at first, but a little bit of use to it, you'll get used to it. But the big thing is that this fire selector is polymer, not metal, which I guess is how JG was able to basically market it for 60 bucks. Uh, the rails themselves are polymer, so be careful of how tight you put attachments on here because it will warp the metal or the plastic I mean but that's not the most interesting part the interesting part about this is the buttstock because the buttstock let me just show you what what the fuck yeah yeah the buttstock contains connectors which I know a lot of you are scratching your head, but hear me out on this, because I see this as a good thing. <laughs> are you serious? I seriously do. Hear me out. Let's, because I put a lipo in this. Yes, I put a lipo in this, just to see if it could take it, and it handled it. It handled ten magazines worth. That's five high caps. The high cap it came with, and five mid caps. Semi-automatic and full auto fire. Sustained full auto fire, mind you. And the motor handled it. Here's the thing. Um, and this is something I actually would like a lot of more high-end guns to have, is that, let's say you have a very good LiPo in here. 
that lipo then begins to overcharge your gun and cause the motor to constantly wind. Well, for many, it's more or less they have to quickly open up the buttstock and mess around and pull the wire out. But for this one, and this is something I think a lot of people, I wish a lot of more high-end companies would do and actually offer it as an actual safety feature to players, is you just basically flip a switch here, pull it up, and you can effectively disconnect the connection. Cutting the connection to the overcharged battery that's completely overcharging it or sending more power than the battery needs, causing the motor to, well, you get what I'm saying, and effectively stopping cat a catastrophe. Effectively cool. Now, the butt stock itself does not retract or what have you because it's molded plastic, but it is at a very comfortable length to where it's not bad. It's actually manageable. It act I can actually effectively shoulder it. It's like an AK almost, where I can effectively shoulder the weapon and the cheek riser is actually really nice. It's set in a position where I can acquire iron sights really good. However, the iron sights, in my opinion, are not that great, so I painted mine. I painted the rear sight with orange and the front sight white, so that way I can acquire a decent little target. But in reality, we're not going to be using iron sights. I know you guys, we're not using iron sights, we're using optics. Now, aside from that, what about the comfortability? It's actually not that bad. I'm not going to lie. It's a really comfortable gun, it's really good, and. Well, that's how it is. Now, I did have to modify this. So, shooting test will be interesting, to say the least. It has a longer air barrel. Because the barrel it came with was ridiculously short and came to here. I'm not joking on that. This is how far the inner barrel came, and it was comically short. Now, it does have a standard hop-up. I have modified this. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that now. The effective range it was getting without the modification was laughably 50 feet at the most, even with the hop up all the way up. Even the hop up itself I've modified to have to be a redneck flat hop, which is where I basically took uh, tape and another bit of a, hop, of a hop up and just kind of taped on it. Either way, though. What I'm trying to say is it's upgradable. It has a standard V3 gearbox. And if you have the ability to, you're able to actually solder it, or if you want, just completely rip out the guts of it, and even rip out the wiring of this one, and just completely cut out a big old hole so that way the wires can run all the way through. So I'm trying to tell you guys. And effectively, this is a sleeper gun. I'm not joking on that. You can turn this into a sleeper gun. But yeah, um, it's actually, I've, I've gabbed on long enough. Let's actually get to the firing test, and actually see how good this thing actually is now with my upgrades to it. All right, so we have the AK-15 well, here. I say 15 because um, I have the 762 by 39 style magazine in it, not the uh, 556 style, but either way. And with the longer inner barrel, which by the way, I did chrono this before with the short ass inner barrel that was in here, you'll be getting around 220. The FPS, definitely below 300 with a point two. I have match grade game face BBs instead of my tried and true black ops point two BBs because well I did not have the money to buy the big 10,000 bottle that I usually get so if you guys want to help out with the BB situation PayPal link down below anyway this is going to be interesting because of it being a rifle let's go ahead get the chronograph on it in the end here and firing <laughs> One ninety eight, one ninety nine, one ninety five, one ninety five. Oh, there we go. There we go. Two seventy three, one eighty eight, one eighty eight. Hold on. Okay, yeah, no, the fluctuation was real, folks, but that was actually a solid reading of 273. So, yeah. It's definitely weird to say the least, but uh, it's one of those things. Either way, though. Just gonna show you what it does on a lipo. That's just way too damn fun. Either way, though. Let's go ahead get outside and this little 0.25s and let's see how she does shall we
All right, so here we are about beyond 100 feet, give or take. The target that we'll be shooting it is about 50 feet out, and I have a magazine load with 0.25s. Now, since this thing is shooting about, ooh, say, 275 to 280, I did a reshoot. It's, it's almost at 300 FPS. I'm just going to do a quick test real quick to see... Oh, she does. And before anyone asks, I can actually see above the run cam so you'll be able to see. Doing a quick firing test. Real quick. Just. Oh, she's shooting straight. Just adjust the hop up a tiny bit. Okay. Anyway, let's go ahead and get the run cam on. 0.25s. Let's see if she's going to hit the target. So, here we go. Oh yeah! She's shooting alright. Now let's see... <clears throat> with the hop-up all the way back. Now this is the stock hop-up. I am going to replace the hop-up with something a little better. Uh, in the future, mind you. Let's see if it hits the barn. It's going... It's hitting and going over at the same time. It's a little weird. Like... Like, I think it is, but again, the run cam footage will show you, but I think it is reaching out to 100 feet. Now, what does this thing sound and look like on full auto? Well, let's see. Actually, sounds pretty good. I'm surprised it actually handles really good. Like, I'm not smelling anything burning. I'm not smelling anything like it's like it's grinding or anything like that. Huh. Get back inside and uh, give the final verdict, shall we, folks? I'm not going to lie when I say that I will actually be using this gun. I'm, I'm not lying when I say I'll be getting more magazines for this gun since it can take standard AK magazines. I'm probably going to get some Bakelite mags so I can actually give it that nice look of black and Bakelite. Because, again, that looks really nice and I like it. However, what are my thoughts on this? Intrigued, more or less. The fact the company has made this for $60 and offered more than a $60 gun would ever give effectively is really nice. The best way I can describe it is it's like the Tabor I have. On the outside, you may think it's crap, but when you actually open up on the inside and see that it can be upgraded, much like any other airsoft gun, then the possibilities are endless. It's a blank canvas. And would I say it's worth the $60? Yes, most definitely it's worth the $60. And to be fair, I say grab one. I'm, I'm not joking. It's a JG. Don't let the name of Well or UK Arms fool you. It is a JG. Through and through, it's a JG built gun. Until someone corroborates and says the story that I've found is not real and is nothing more than a conspiracy theory, please, to anyone who's worked in the airsoft industry, sound off in the comments section. I want to know. I gotta know. But, either way. <clears throat> Thank you all for watching. As always, I've been Airsoft Al, and... You thought I was going to go off without the final verdict, did you? I got you, didn't I? <laughs> okay, so, final verdict of the JG AK-12 is no more, no less than an 8 out of 10. It's a good buy at $60, and the fact the upgradability is there, it would have definitely leveled this thing up to a 9 out of 10. But it's not a must-own. It's just a good buy. There are some issues, yes, one of them being, of course... Unlike the AK-12, this one does not have a fully ambidextrous fire selector. That would have been a great addition and would have 
definitely give you that value of $60 because I think this is more or less a $50 or $40 gun right here. But again, with the Asian markets, I'm not really 100% sure about it. But I think if you actually offered standard, not proprietary parts, but more standard AK parts with this, then you would definitely have a $80 or even a $70 gun. But that's really about it. That's all I have to say. It's a really good gun. Just misses a few things that I wish could be, you know, done right, in my opinion. But what can you do? Anyway, thank you all for watching. As always, I've been Airsoft Al, the common man's airsofter who reviews bad guns so you don't have to. And the Christmas season has just started, folks. So, yeah, let's go have some fun. And I promise you, this is the only bad gun I'm going to be, this is the only surprising gun I'm going to be reviewing. I swear I will. Because, let's face it, there's a lot of good guns under the Christmas tree. So, let's see what else we can get, shall we? Till next time. Thank you.